Hey, you! Prisoner! Identify yourself! <coughs> I, 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 I'm sorry. Here is my pass. I was sent here to the infirmary to see Dr. Michael Zizilenko by my barrack officer because of my sickness. So, you a priest. How does it feel to have your head and face shaved, Papa? Your so-called mask of holiness has been shaved off. And now what remains but a simple prisoner, just like any other. <laughs> Go ahead. Proceed. Spasiba. Thank you. <coughs> O Lord, hearken unto me, thy unworthy priest, and have mercy upon all those here who are suffering from this accursed typhoid fever. The year is 1930. The day is Great and Holy Friday, just days before the glorious celebration of Christ's resurrection on Pascha. The place we find ourselves is on the frigid island of Solovki, situated in northern Russia, on the White Sea, just miles south of the Arctic Circle. The famous Solovki Monastery, instead of being used to serve Christ, has been converted into a prison camp by communist Soviet Russia. The inmates consist of whoever was deemed as dangerous to the communist party. This not only meant common criminals, thieves, murderers, and the like, but also many endless Christians and clergymen who refused to stay silent amid the terrible persecutions and tyranny of the Communist Party inflicted upon its Russian people. Ah, oh, my dear brother in Christ, Father Nicholas. Hello, Vladika, our dear bishop of the secret catacomb church. Shh! Quickly, close the door. We are still in risk of being overheard. <coughs> Tell me, dear one, is there any news from the other clergy about a Holy Friday service tonight? Yes, Vladika, there is. I have been sent by Bishop Victor Nektari and Iliaran to tell you that the service will start in an hour in the big fish drying shed, the one in the forest on the way to the rope and net making factory. Ah, halfway between us and them. A good idea indeed. At the shed where they dry the fish, our new chapel. As you know, Father Nicholas, the consequence for celebrating services in this prison could be an extension of our sentence here by many years. Or it could even mean execution. This has happened many times already. Yes, Vladika. Bishop Victor also told me that the secret password at the door of the fish drying shed is three fast knocks, then two slow knocks. Okay. Let us leave one at a time so as not to attract any attention our way. You go first. Father Nicholas, I will stay behind to check up on some more of our sickly inmates here. With your blessing, Vladika, it is amazing to see that God has providentially sent you here to be with us so that you may take care of Russia's persecuted flock, both in body and in spirit. Shh! 
горания двух крайних диодов. Amen. Now go. Go and may God protect us all. Huh? Leaving the premises at such an hour? Where's your papers? Yes. Yes, it's right here. I've been sent to the rope and net factory to help finish for the day as the typhoid fever has caused a lack of workers. Dr. Michael has deemed me healthy enough to work again. Okay. Спасибо. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Пожалуйста. You're welcome. Господи помилуй. Господи помилуй. Господи помилуй. Господи помилуй. Ah, there it is. There is our small and blessed fish chapel. Glory to God for getting me here safely. Slava Bogu. Bishop Victor? Ah, Father Nikolai. How are things, Vladika? Ah, glory to God. Things are going just as well as can be at the rope factory. <laughs> <laughs> By God's grace, I pray that we can even hold vigil tomorrow on Pascha night. Do you really think so? Vladika Maxim has his doubts. He thinks there will be too many guards on the watch on Pascha night. Oh, that old pessimist. I've been trying to infect him with some optimism, like that of Christ's glorious resurrection. How is his work at the infirmary? He struggles to keep up with the spreading typhoid fever, but by God's grace, he manages to inspire those around him. Even the most hardened criminals confess their sins, and many return to an honest life again. He will be coming to the Great Friday Vigil shortly. Glory to God, even though we clergy and laymen are sent to perish in these prison camps, God still lets his grace shine forth. Come now, the service is about to begin. Blessed is our God, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. King, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who art everywhere present and fillest all things. And so, deep within the forest on the island of Solovki, hidden from the eyes of a godless regime, a modest fish drying shed was transformed into a secret cathedral. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Our dear Vladika Maxim and all our brothers here tonight, I thank God that we have been blessed to serve another service, away from the sight 
and minds of our persecutors. Seeing that tomorrow night's service will start at midnight, by God's grace, our plan is to celebrate Pascha, the glorious resurrection of our Lord. Not here, but at the physician's cell, close to Vladika Maxim's infirmary. What? No! What oh, there's many guards over there. Vladika, we'll get caught! It's too dangerous. No, 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 we can't do it. That can't be the plan. My dear brothers, I know it is dangerous, but by the grace of God, our dear Vladika Maxim has the plan. Yes, yes, yes. Do not stress in attempting to obtain a permit. I have helped arrange it so that any may visit me for urgent care. Simply act like you have contracted the accursed typhoid fever and the guards will let you pass. We will have to be quiet. The door will be shut and kept as soundproof as possible. Only remember, three fast knocks and two slow knocks. May God be with you all until then. Thus, each of the prisoners returned to their barracks, unnoticed and without suspicion. The next day, each returned to their allotted work at the prison camp. Some worked as loggers in the thick evergreen forests. Others fished around the Russian island. Some worked in small factories. But many still lay bedridden due to the typhoid fever. By the end of the day, at sunset, each of the informed clergymen and faithful prayerfully awaited the allotted time to celebrate the Paschal Liturgy. Adushka! Father Nikolai! Do you hear that? It's the 11 p.m. bell. That means the guards will be finishing up their last rounds for the night. Shh. Yes, Vanya. That's right. Still, we must wait a bit longer. Father, let's go! No, Ivan, not yet. You'll get yourself killed. We'll go soon, one at a time, so that we don't cause any suspicion. And just remember to act very sickly, and if any guard asks where you're headed, just remember you're headed to Dr. Zizilenko's cell that is what Bishop Maxim was called before he was secretly chosen to be Bishop of the Catacomb Church. The authorities don't know this, and even if they did, I know they would not recognize that as his name. Okay, Vanya, I'll go first. You remembered how to get there? Yes, Batushka. I pray we make it. May God be with us. Father Nicholas, thank God you could make it. Slava Bogu, glory to God that we can celebrate Pascha, the feast of feasts together. Amen. Vladika Victor, we have the bread, wine, and the... Shh, 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 shh. Someone's coming. Oh, hey, should we uh, check this door? You know what door this is. You're likely to catch typhoid in there. The doctor checks all of these various people. We should check anyways, right? Do you want to risk that? Uh, the captain told us to go and check. In perilous moments just like this, 
with their very lives on the line, God constantly protected his courageous followers from the eyes and ears of the godless so that their faithful witness could transform even the darkest places of oppression into beacons of light and hope. My friend, my friend, right now we have, we have cigarettes, we have vodka, and you want to go walk in a room filled probably with typhoid? Come on, it's cold, it's late. There's no noise going on. Okay, yeah, you're right, I don't want to get sick. This is my only life. <laughs> That's the spirit. All right. <laughs> I toast to you, my friend. <laughs> I think they're gone. We also have the candles. And here are our makeshift vestments for the liturgy. We can begin when you and the other clergy are ready. And let us not delay. Christos vos crece. Vos vos crece. Thus, that night, a solemn, quiet, and yet bright and joyful Paschal liturgy was served with about 15 inmates in attendance. The White Night of Solovki was coming to a close. The sun rose and seemed to turn the monastery prison camp into a gleaming city which filled the faithful there with an unearthly joy. Although the Soviet communists sought to turn the Solovki Monastery into a gulag for their own godless purposes, little did they know that even then, Solovki became a place of martyric sanctity. Christos vos cresci. Vois in you vos cresci. Christ is risen. Truly he is risen. Amen, Nick. What a beautiful and inspiring episode. Here we, just days ago, Nick, we had the, we had the pleasure and the blessing yeah. to celebrate Pascha in a beautiful parish yeah. surrounded by our friends with our warm clothes on and the, you yeah. know, and look what they had to suffer through. Yeah. They're lacking of basic necessities. Well, and that, and that speaks, Nick, to the bravery of these men to, like you said, smuggling this stuff around. Imagine if you get caught and you've got a little bit of wine on you, right? Because mm -hmm. you're trying to, somehow they found it somewhere. And they know you're a clergyman. Exactly. Yeah. Right? You're not one of them. So yeah. you're, yeah. And to think, you know, what's interesting is that in an outward way, no amazing or spectacular miracle happened. Um, but at the same time, I think the miracle is their steadfastness. Amen. Right? Yes. At this sad point in Russian history, uh, people are getting arrested and executed left and right. Or yep. being sent to exile, like these clergymen, Bishop Maxime, Father Nikolai, yep. uh, Fa uh, Bishop Victor. Mm -hmm. To see how utterly decimated the church was yeah. under communism. Yeah. And, you know, what's amazing to see as well is that in the midst of that, saints and martyrs arise, the right? The true faithful. Which yes. is which is really a an image of the resurrection, right? Mm. This this breaking down, this crucifixion, also brings life, Amen. right? And now yeah. we in America, not even a hundred years later, we have literally millions 
of untold, unspoken martyrs behind the Iron Curtain. A, yeah, the Iron yeah. Curtain, this silent persecution. Mm -hmm. Very few people, you know, may not know of the staggering persecution and the staggering numbers that happened behind this Iron right. Curtain. It was right. silent. Right. Right. But there are accounts. Nick, I wanted to comment here on this element of when things are toughest, right? There's this idea, and I think we were talking about this the other night, the church and Christ, the Holy Spirit, in some ways, I believe, purifies his church mm -hmm. through persecution, right? Mm -hmm. And we know, we've talked about the, the history of the Orthodox Church is literally a history of persecution. Mm -hmm. And for these people in these dangerous circumstances to celebrate Pascha, and I think in America, with all of our largesse and our affluence and, you know, everything decadence. Our decadence, I will admit I've been there in certain times where you're like, ah, should I go to, should I go to church tonight? You know, mm. ah, maybe I won't tonight. Right. Mm. Whereas they, in their situation, had, could have had every excuse in the world to be like, oh, no, we can't. Yeah. We, we can't do Pascha. Yeah. We can't risk our lives. Yeah. Right. And in those circumstances, how much more ought we be faithful to what's so easy to just jump in your car and drive to your mm -hmm. parish and be yeah. part of your community? Yeah. Yeah, the zeal that, that these new martyrs of Russia and Eastern Europe uh, have shown are an example for us, God willing, to, to wake up in this time of spiritual darkness and sleepiness and yes. laziness yes. To, to wake up you know, and to, and to wake up to things around us and to really set our priorities straight. Amen. Right. Nick, I hope and pray that this podcast itself is one small ingredient to that inspiration for people listening right now Indeed, yeah. to be, to do what you just now said. I loved how you put that, Nick, to be faithful to endure until the end, mm -hmm. you know, to take their faith seriously. Yeah. yeah. That's one of the visions of this podcast is that is to bring these stories to life. Our senses are just saturated with media of all forms, positive, but also a lot of negative to just sit down and read the lives of the saints or to even, you know, pull a book out, do mm -hmm. the work of pulling a book mm -hmm. out instead of pressing a button is very difficult for us. Unfortunately, we've Absolutely. become so weak and so yep. lazy. Yep. Our hope is to bring the lives of the saints. And is hopefully enticing you to want to learn more about yeah. the lives of the saints. Yeah, right? I mean, truly, this is not even the tip of the iceberg. This is like what we're bringing to you guys is a snowflake on yeah. the iceberg. Yeah. But at the same time, we are working diligently, our whole team, to bring you these stories. We're inspired and we want to share this with everyone. Amen. And, you know, the way we put it is like, it's like a pop-up storybook where we have the script and then once it comes to life, it's like it lifts off the page. Yep. And we want our listeners to be just as inspired when the stories and scripts lift off the page yes. for you to listen to and to be inspired. Yes. Nick, I'm going to tell this story anecdotally um it was a great memory i, I want to say it was several weeks ago um, but i could have the timing wrong but some time ago um if you recall um during liturgy during the homily um father john told the story of saint peter the merciful oh yeah and it was so awesome because we were kind of looking around our parish because many of the people of cloud of witnesses journey with the saints who have volunteered their time we all knew that story because yeah. we had acted it out and and had enjoyed that together as a community and that power that bond of the story and the power of saint peter's uh the merciful's you know witness yeah is is genuinely powerful yeah and that wouldn't have happened if you don't know the story mm -hmm. yeah it's true to to read in the lives of the saints is to some extent you're partaking in their life and their witness and the hope is it's not really us reaching out to them it's them reaching out to us to Amen. light our candle right Amen. and and that's definitely we hope that we can to some extent be a conduit in that lighting so in light of 
the glorious resurrection of Christ Amen. and seeing that we're in bright week, we at Cloud of Witnesses hope that we can help share the inspiration and the light of Christ and his holy resurrection to all of our listeners yes. and to a world full of darkness that desperately needs desperately. the joy and hope of the future resurrection. The illumination Amen. of the light of Christ. Amen. And Nick, one way that that can help spread is if you're interested, tell people about us. Yeah. We're, we're on Instagram yeah. and YouTube. Just search Cloud of Witnesses Radio. Mm -hmm. Give it a share. We're also on Facebook. You know, the whole idea is that we can use these as tools to reach more people. Amen. Because um, Nick, if Christians don't use social media for good, the demons will use yeah. social media. Oh yeah, the for devil bad. the devil's already dominating the sphere, yeah. if you ask me. Yeah. Um, but that can that can easily be overpowered by the light. Just as in Pascha at the service, come receive the light from the light that is never overtaken by night. Like we mentioned, we want to bring you all more and more stories. We are scheduled to bring you all stories every first and third Tuesday of every month. Amen. So tune in, like, subscribe. Please share with those you know. Tell your friends and family. Yes. It, it, those little things go a long way to yes. getting this message out there. Indeed. Yeah. Thank you again for listening. We hope that you all will be able to bask in this joy and light of the Paschal celebration. Amen. Thank you for listening. Christ is risen. Truly he is risen. Christ is risen from the dead. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Cloud of Witnesses, Journey with the Saints. We hope it proved to be exciting and inspiring for all of our listeners. Trampling down death by death. May God, through the prayers of his most pure mother and all the saints, guide us all to the heavenly homeland. We hope to see you next time, here on Cloud of Witnesses, Journey with the Saints. And on those in the tombs bestowing life, Christ is risen from